guys, it's Birds and I we're here with a good old fashioned reaction to what I'm probably gonna call Alicia Doherty being out of pocket for 11 minutes straight. Um, actually, I might throw Josh in there too, <laughs> we'll see. But either way, if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so I was sent this video from a couple of people over on Instagram. I don't know this channel, it's called Mastermind Eclipse. I will link the video down below, but it does seem like they are covering the Doherty Dozen in kind of like clip format, just like compiling some clips and putting it on a YouTube channel. And this video is called Alicia Doherty Speaks From Her Mind and Thinks Josh Can Hear Her lol part one strange things and the video has 2.5 thousand views it was posted two days ago and like i said i was sent it over on instagram so we're going to go through it i am not going to speed this up because i want you guys to be able to hear things very clearly and i know what the whole auntie lauren thing some people were like oh it's because you sped the clip up i actually didn't speed that clip up a lot of my reactions i will speed it up just for time's sake um, but that clip was not even sped up, but just so we see things as is, this is an 11 minute and 32 second video. We're going to play it at normal speed, see what unfolds. I watched the first two minutes when I was sent this and my jaw opened and I was like, oh, I have to make this a reaction. Like I, I can't watch the rest. So I have seen the first about two minutes and the rest of it I haven't seen. I saved it for you guys. So we're going to get into it. So they're sitting down to have dinner in this clip and Josh says, oh, you don't have to sit at the table, which is just really weird. Like, do you want the kid to sit on the floor? That Like what the caption said, do you want the child to go sit in, in their room by themselves? Like what's, what's the deal here? But the way he manhandles, this is when Dixie was a puppy and the way he manhandles this puppy really pisses me off. The dog isn't even doing anything that is bad. He could have literally just gone and motioned for the dog to leave the dining room table. And that's part of training. When you get a puppy, as a reminder for any of the, you know, morons out there, training is a key part of raising your dog and even if you get an adult dog from the shelter there are going to be certain things in your household that you might have rules that you need to teach the teach the dog you don't come over and pick up the dog and manhandle the dog and get it out of the way like i don't understand this i think that this speaks to him um having a lack of lack of compassion i think it speaks to him having a lack of uh grace and not being able to just take a couple seconds, teach the puppy, it's a young dog, instead you wanna get physical. And um, the, the thing that I will say about people who mistreat animals, y'all already know how I feel about this, even if this is something surface level, I hope that karma comes and bites you in the ass one day. And people that mistreat animals, Alicia's already been shown that she can't even manage to give the dogs a bath without using exfoliating body wash on them. I'll link those videos down below. Some people just aren't meant to have dogs. If you have 12 kids, how about you focus on your kids, which are out of control as is, that's a task that needs your full-time attention. So maybe having pets is too much for you, but you know what being an adult is? Admitting that maybe we just shouldn't have dogs until some of the kids get out of the house, hopefully go to college or get themselves jobs and don't become TikTokers. And then we can think about getting a dog. I just don't think that it is working out for them. I, and that's my opinion. I don't think that they are people who are able to properly care for pets, my opinion. Did 
you hear me? Josh? Joshua? What? Did you hear me? No. I think that's what he wore yesterday. So this clip is just really weird. It's her saying, did you hear me? She didn't say anything before that. And then she says, oh, I think that's what he wore yesterday. So maybe it's implying that one of the kids was trying to wear the same outfit two days in a row. Glad she caught that. Hope that the child didn't wear the same outfit to school two days in a row, especially if the clothing needed to be washed. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is really weird. She puts the dirty broom and dustpan in one of the child's lunch boxes, and then she smirks when she closes the lunch box. And this lunch box was one of the twin boys. I don't know if she thought that this was a joke. First of all, it's disgusting. Secondly, it's not hygienic. Thirdly, it's not funny. It's not quirky. There are 500 other things that you could do if you want to pull an innocent prank on your child and have them open it at school that would be innocent and actually be funny. This is not funny. It's dirty and literally like, you're, you're gonna sit there and take this dirty broom and dirty dustpan that has been cleaning up lint, crumbs, dog hair, people hair, people, dry skin flakes, dirt, mud, who knows what else. And you're gonna put it in this child's lunchbox and then smirk. one kid is literally like sticking his whole fa face in in the camera taking up all of the attention not allowing other kids to be seen and this is a child who has done this quite a few times and alicia never corrects his behavior oh, they open, are. Mine. open okay. it this is a card from zoe it's probably a thousand dollars open it I need it to finish this one. I need a pen. I don't have a pen on a pencil. That's it. Mom. A folding. I don't know. Why Show did the life do that? Why did the life do that? Let me see it. This has been a kind, I, I want to say, a little bit of a theory for a while on the Doherty Dozen channel. 
And we've seen quite a few clips of kids not being happy to participate in her TikToks, in her roll calls, in her little day in life, whatever. Kids don't always want to be on. And that's not a new concept to anybody. Kids are not interested in constantly being filmed. They don't want to have to come up with what their favorite cookie is or what they're what they want to do for a New Year's resolution. Like kids don't care about that kind of stuff. They want to play and they want attention. For the most part, that's what kids want. They want to have fun and they want to receive positive attention from the adults in their life. And based on this business that Alicia decided she was going to build, instead of playing and receiving attention, they receive attention if and when they participate in what she is producing that day. So this whole thing with the lunchbox thing, evidently Alicia has made this a game. Now, y'all know I don't watch all of her content because I don't have that much time in the day. I work full time and I have other things that I'm interested in as well. But if this is kind of her little game, that's fine. I think that's awesome. If you want to do something funny and it's a little inside joke that you have, that's cool. But why are you putting something that is so dirty and disgusting into a lunchbox where the child is going to be eating the food that has been trapped and sitting next to a dirty broom and dustpan? That's the part of why this clip was included. It's not, oh, hey, it's a random object, so funny, whatever. It's the fact that it's dirty and disgusting and it's going in this child's lunchbox. That is the part that is not okay. So I wanted to peek on their TikTok before I close this video out and Alicia decided to post this video of her and Josh driving and it says driving to church, driving to church as though we didn't just scream at each other for 20 minutes trying to get out the door because the dog ran away and the toddler just realized she has to poop and the teenager wouldn't get out of bed and why do we have so many shoes but none of them match? Trying to be relatable? So funny, Alicia, you're just a great A comic here. This isn't funny because this is her reality. They do actually live in chaos and nothing matches and nobody can find anything and kids are running all around because there is no order there is no um there's just no rules this is like a house of do what you want eat what you want buy what you want and f the rest like it is pure chaos so this would be funny if it wasn't true I'm so tired of her dancing with her oldest child. I am pretty sure that he's going to be a TikToker. He's going to stay in the Doherty household because he gets whatever it is that he wants. And he's just going to make TikToks all day. This kid also has a ton of really creepy fan pages on TikTok. People that are obsessed with him and hyping him up. And his images are all over the internet. It is so weird how people have attached to one or more of these Doherty kids. And if we look back, it's all thanks to Alicia. People know more about this kid than anyone should know about any child online. And it's all because Alicia shared it. So good job, Alicia. I hope that he really enjoys that Jeep because it looks like he's going to be riding around all summer making TikToks not planning to go to college, not getting a job because you have bragged about it yourself. So I hope that you feel so good about yourself and the views are down. So they might have to start figuring out what is plan B. How can we start to kind of regain our footing because people are not interested in her oversharing her exploitation and her constant flex culture and just buying nonsensical garbage all day long. That's all the content that she has. The reason that it pisses me off now that she calls these, um, she calls the twins and the other boy that's the same age, calls them triplets. The reason that it pisses me off that she says triplets is because her adopted kids are treated differently than her bio kids are. That's my opinion based on all the content that I have seen. Her bio kids are put in a, on a little bit of a different pedestal. And it's very easy to see if you actually watch her content. So if they were all treated fairly, 
calling them triplets, I, I wouldn't really have a whole lot to say about it, but it's the fact that they are treated unfairly. You're not allowed to call them triplets when you treat them differently. That's not okay. And here we are again sharing all of the kids' ages. She also puts all of the kids' ages in every single YouTube description box. So that's what I'm saying. Like people know so much about these kids and I don't wanna harp too much on things that I've talked about before, but it really upsets me because we know their ages, we know their birthdays, we know some of their previous medical issues, part of their uh, trauma if they had any current health struggles that they might be dealing with. We know where they live, we know where they go to school, we know their favorite color, we know their favorite movie, we know what shoe size they wear, what their favorite clothing is, what their favorite cartoon is, what their favorite movie was last year. What do we not know about the Doherty kids? How about get rid of all of that and let's focus on the parents. Let's focus on what Alicia's favorite color is. What's Alicia's favorite movie? I have an idea. How about their oldest, instead of lining up the kids, have the oldest do a roll call on Josh and Al Alicia. Line them up outside of the house and say, what's your New Year's resolution? What's your favorite candy? What's your favorite movie? Let's do that for a year straight and actually give the kids a break. And while they're on that break, why don't you teach them some common manners? And as parents, why don't y'all start to treat all of your kids the same? Because it's very clear to see the longer and longer that you watch The Doherty Dozen, it is very, very evident that some of these kids are treated differently. And of course, that's only my opinion, but it is an opinion based off of content that I have taken in over an extended period of time. Good morning, guys. So I'm gonna throw this into a video that I'm currently editing, so it's not gonna be very long, but I had some afterthoughts and I didn't wanna make this its own video. So I was over checking out Doherty Does It on TikTok. And by the way, she has me blocked on TikTok. I don't even upload on TikTok. So it's just really funny to me. Like just, you're, you're not able, you, you literally can't block out everybody who has an opinion about you. I would love to see her blocked list. She's probably up there with like Jeffree Star and without her crystal ball and how many people she has blocked on social media. But either way, I just thought that was really funny. When it comes to what she's been posting recently on TikTok, she decided to do her one of her Monday mini vlogs with the kinship boy. And as we can already expect, people are thirst all thirsty for him in the comments. It's so disgusting, the comments that she allows slide and the ones that she'll get rid of. If you give criticism, you'll get your comment deleted. But if you're thirsting over this minor boy who she's supposed to be taking care of, the comment will stay. It's so disgusting and it's so just like hypocritical. You wanna sit there and try to say that like, oh, you know, I'm protecting these kids and I'm giving them a better life and all of this kind of stuff. But you're literally allowing people to say pr provocative things about this child. And this is a really consistent thing. I want to make it clear. It's not like one or two comments that I came across and I'm just making a big deal out of nothing. This is consistent. You can look on any TikTok where she posts the kinship boy and you'll see these completely out of line comments from people saying inappropriate things about how good looking he is or you know how they quote want him it's appalling but she decided to do the mini vlog with him and they went to the this like trampoline park i was pleasantly surprised that she didn't take him shopping that was great but here's my problem, and I've said this with a lot of other family vloggers too, stop filming other people's children in public. If you wanna make a vlog and there are other kids around, then maybe you need to work your camera angles so that you're not capturing other children and putting them on your massive social media platform. I've said this before, but maybe those parents that are taking their kids there they choose to keep their kids off social media and they don't want their kids' faces 
posted to your millions of followers on social media because you just have to make this mini vlog. Maybe you need to learn how to capture video of your kid and your kid only, or if it's a situation where you can't avoid it, learn how to blur kids' faces. You don't have those parents' consent to put them on your huge social media platforms. It really bothers me how like this whole idea of just like vlogging your life has become so normalized, which I get it. Like times change, like, you know, things progress. That's just part of living life. I get that. I'm not someone who's like stuck in the stone age and wanting things to be the same forever. I like progress, but my constant problem is if vlogging is going to be normalized can we at least not film other children if you want to put your kids on social media and not protect them and not you know hide their identities and all of this kind of stuff that's your choice people are still going to have opinions about it as we know but let's not put other people's kids all over social media is that like too much of an ask am i just like expecting way too much like what's the deal she also decided to get her kids favorite restaurant after the trampoline park which is of course mcdonald's my whole thing with her kids and their diet and this whole idea of like mcdonald's processed foods sugar she showed in her recent wegmans haul she bought a bunch of valentine's candy and stuff once in a while that can be fun but the problem with Alicia is because she shares these shopping hauls and all of this kind of stuff, all that we see is constant junk food. And I just always think it's funny because Alicia will say, oh, it's, I found Valentine's treats. I found Christmas treats. I found so-and-so treats. I'm sure we'll see it for Easter. A treat to me is something that you don't have on a consistent basis. And tell me if I'm wrong about that. But with a lot of kids that consume sugar it actually is a treat it's like oh we went to dinner at this nice restaurant and you know they got some fancy dessert that they wouldn't usually have at home if she didn't try to be such a know-it-all i don't think that people would have as as harsh criticism as they do now but the problem is is that you come on and you want to act like you know about what these kids that have an elevated need of care what their diet should look like and what they need and you know all of these like tips and hacks don't try to act like you're giving out advice when your own content is nothing but junk food electronics no rules ungrateful kids little to no structure and exploiting them all over the internet but i did notice when she took him to mcdonald's like unless she cut that part out he didn't say thank you this is something that i noticed with a lot of her kids so i'm not picking on this one situation all of the stuff that she gives to these kids materialistic stuff it's only with a few of them that i ever hear thank you some some form of appreciation some form of gratitude it's very rare that I hear that vocalized. And when you set that as the norm where that is acceptable, you're not gonna have grateful kids because you're just giving them what they want. They're not voicing their appreciation and they continue to get what they want. So why would they be grateful? Now, a bunch of people in the comments were pointing out that in her morning routine yesterday, there was no clock on the wall. And then today she posts another video and the clock is back. Here's the whole thing with the clock. The clock can be set to whatever time she wants it to be. And with her track record of not being, you know, super transparent with some stuff, like a lot of other YouTubers are, even if the clock is on the wall, people are going to raise question because there was this whole thing last summer where she took the clock off and, you know, 
people are interested, they're going to react to it and they're going to put two and two together where you're able to like look at how much sunlight there is outside versus where she lives versus the time that it says. How about don't lie? How about don't put yourself on this pedestal of like, oh, I'm super mom. I'm able to do it all. Look at me waking up at 4 a.m. How about just be honest? I think honesty is such a, it's almost become like this rarity online for people to really be honest and be honest for a long period of time. It's tough to find. It, it, and it's a really funny thing because everyone's always trying to like one up each other and, oh, well, look at what I can do. And you're not hustling enough. You're not working hard enough. I wake up before everyone else. I go to bed after everyone else. Like it's this whole like hustle culture. And I've talked about hustle culture before, but it's extremely toxic to not only put that out, but then also if you're lying about it, if you're changing the time on your clock and this kind of stuff and you have other parents watching I don't know it's just a tangled web to me but either way you know the clock comes up and down and you know maybe that's just her way it's another avenue to get people to leave comments asking questions you know it's probably intentional because let's be real her views are down views are on the decline and comments equals engagement and engagement on TikTok is good even if it's people talking about a damn clock last thing i wanted to talk about before i let this video close out is these snackerty boards the damn snackerty boards you guys like <laughs> these snackerty boards are becoming something that the older kids are teased about. And when I see her and her oldest child doing these TikToks together, there will always be comments saying, if so-and-so doesn't do this TikTok with me, no snackerty board for insert the kid's name. So it's almost become like this running joke. And I always wonder about like, not so much what's going on on social media. What are his days at school like? Because you have to think, like, when, when your parents put you on social media and you have this huge audience of everybody has their eyes on what your family is doing, what is that like at school? What is it like at school for a 17-year-old kid to be teased about having a snackerty board with, you know, cute little orange pumpkins and all this kind of stuff. Like, what is that like? Like, how does it translate to real life? Because obviously he's being teased about it online. I have to assume that some of that translates over to what kids at school think. And it's such a selfish thing to do, in my opinion. And there's nothing wrong with parents wanting to be on social media. I think it's awesome. But once you rope your kids into it, you have to not only think, how is it going to impact them just being online, but how are the kids in their own school going to react to this? You made their life public. You made them a public figure. You open that door for everybody to see inside and, you know, have opinions and talk about and how is that going to impact your kids? I just don't understand in this day and age, like why is it such an ask to protect your kids? I said in a recent video, if TikTok was a brick and mortar store, I guarantee that most parents would not take their kid into TikTok supervised. So why would you allow it to go? go on unsupervised? Why would you expose them to that? I just don't understand it. And I think that it's kind of alarming the fact that 
saying, hey, maybe you should protect your kids from this really toxic thing called social media upsets people. It really gets people going. And it's just simply an opinion. Hey, you know, I'm not saying go boycott outside the person's house and, you know, start a fire. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, hey, maybe protect your kids. Make all the parenting content you want. Go to Wegmans 18 times a week if that's what your little heart desires. But you're unleashing followers onto your children. And that's not protecting your kids, my opinion. So either way, I did want to throw this in to the video that I'm editing. So I will let that other video close out. More content coming. I am getting back in the swing of things. Um, and yeah, I'm excited. So either way, I will let the video close out. I hope that you guys are well and I will see you guys soon. I do appreciate my followers who shared this video with me. Again, I will link it down below in case you guys want to rewatch it or anything like that. But whether it's her older content or current day content, it's undeniable that there is some really problematic stuff that Alicia herself has published. And as long as it's published by her, it is up for commentary. We're not here to dig for info. We're not leaking things. We're not secretly recording people or anything like that. We are simply reacting to things that she says and does. And that is internet culture after all commentary is part of it. And if you don't want opinions about it, keep it the hell off the internet. So either way, I appreciate it. For now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.